Hello and welcome to another New Catholic Generation movie review. I'm your host, David, and I'm here with Renee, Amy, and Joe. Today, we will be reviewing the film The Good Catholic, which was requested to us by Sylvester Shashi. I think that's how you say it. Ultraman Eartha and Bethany Lander, among others. It's a film that was directed by Paul Schulberg, and it actually, it only came out in 16 theaters. It was a very limited release, although fortunately one of those theaters was just an hour away. So we, we all made the trek to go see it yesterday, and now we are here to review it. <laughs> now we have strong opinions. <laughs> so, the film centers around four main characters. The first one, the namesake of the film, the good Catholic, is... Father Daniel, played by Zachary Spicer. Who he looks like Father Mike Schmitz, if I might say so myself. <laughs> a little bit. I, I mean, noticed. A little I did bit. get the yeah. Father Mike Schmitz vibe from him, but he's really just he's still an attractive priest. Yeah. So yeah. he thinks uh, of like, hell, oh, like that other just attractive like, priest, Father his, Mike Schmitz. His hair is kind of like just it's similar. perfectly but, parted. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> there you go. He's portrayed as, you know, the, the perfect priest, the you know. he. He, go, he does all the right things. He follows very much in the footsteps of Father Victor, who is portrayed by Danny Glover, who is the elder priest at this parish. He is also very by the books, you know, we're doing things straight and how they're supposed to be done. In contrast to John C. McGinley, who plays Father Ollie, the fun-loving Franciscan priest. Oh, yes. uh, I oh, yes. saw so many people that I knew in that priest. <laughs> He's introduced in his first scene, yeah, <laughs> where he's watching uh, his favorite basketball team mm -hmm. from Indiana with uh, the good Catholic, Father Daniel, and he's saying, you know, man, these are like my passions in life, basketball and like and sugar, like snack basically like snack and... foods. And then he turns to Father Daniel and like, what's your passion? And he says, God. Father Ollie is just like, come on, man, you gotta find something selfish and stupid that makes you human. <laughs> it's just like, oh my god. Like, okay. oh no, just always been God. <laughs> um, and then finally, there is Ren Schmidt as the character of Jane, the woman who just shows up to confession one week, except it's not she's not really coming for a confession. She's yeah. coming to talk about her feelings toward death, starting to plan for this funeral. Um, but then eventually, she just leads to coming every week to get to talk with them. She just wants to talk to Father Daniel. Yeah, and then they, and then over time, they start to develop feelings for each other. Well, like, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the the film was very good about the priests being like, no, we're friends, no, we're friends, no, we're friends. But this is what he just he needed to get away from this woman, though. <laughs> Yeah. But she wouldn't. He just well, it, I mean, it was like, very clear, yeah, because as the film progressed, whenever he would talk about her with, like, any other character, especially the, the elder priest, Father Victor, like, he'd stumble all over the place. Oh, yeah. yeah. And oh, he'd be like, like when, when her? Father her? Victor's like, she. So, like, yeah. as in a woman. It's like, nothing happened. Yeah. 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 Jane, Jane is her name. Um, yeah. it's, a, it's a female name. So, yeah. she... And then Father Ollie being like, whoa, oh, woman's coming to dinner. Oh, in that case, I'll cancel all of my plans. I am totally free for that day. I mean, I'm kidding. He's human everything, but it just made me go like, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> just don't even say it. Yeah, he was, he was definitely meant to be the comic relief in the film. Yeah. <laughs> he had some moments that were really funny. He did. Yes. He did. And also yes. some moments that were really awkward. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he did. He did. Yeah. When he's offering the uh, little mini muffins, and yes. it's like, they're gluten-free and organic. Locally <laughs> sourced. Locally sourced. <laughs> yeah. and they're like, obviously not. And yeah. Funny. And they're that little. Funny. That was funny because then one of the next scenes is he's going out on a, uh, the priest is going out on a jog again after he's eaten these, and then he's holding his back. I was like, Renee, this is what the gluten-free <laughs> stuff does to you, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so go. how would you guys categorize this film? Because it's almost like a, like, forbidden romance type Drama. film. Drama type. Like where they, the characters do have feelings for each other, but they basically have to be in denial about them. For the film. It's like, like a tragic comedy outside of Catholicism. Like to the rest of the world, it'd be like a tragic comedy because it's like sad and confusing and stressful the whole time, but then ends well. According oh, to whoever yeah. made it, well, it ended well. To that's that's what we're going to have to address. Hold on, I said it yeah. to everybody to else outside yeah. of Catholicism. And they're like, yeah. oh, yeah. wow, it ended well. Like, look, he looks so much happier in the end. And, stuff. Okay. and everyone was like, 
I, all the Catholics are like, wait a second. Okay. <laughs> no, so no. We're, we're not going to be able to review this film without talking about the final scene, because the final scene is what... Made or break, broke the whole right. thing. Right. It, 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 uh, <laughs> it's what gives it the, the ultimate destination the film was going for. I don't even understand what's going through his head, but like to, all the way up until the last few seconds of the movie, we don't know what he's thinking as he's running back to the house of his friend Jane. Oh, I think we can see the inspiration from the, the homily he hears yeah. right yes, beforehand. There's a great homily right beforehand that obviously went wrong in his mind because well, he runs yeah. back to Jane's yeah. house and knocks know. back on the door after they hadn't been talking in a while. And after he knocks on the door, he takes off his priest collar and then unbuttons one of the buttons and like kind of puffs himself up and waits <laughs> for her to answer the door and the movie ends. Yeah. And then you're like, what? how else am I supposed to take that? How, he just yeah, ripped how off his priest collar at his girlfriend's like, house. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, the the verse that the pre, the the elder priest is giving the homily on right before is one John four twelve, which is no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. You would not love like that. Right. <laughs> See, right. So, like, the interpretation is the main priest character, the good Catholic, has talked about his faith really hasn't been there, but he says he he find he finds it when he's with this woman. And so when the, the elder priest gives the homily that God and love are the same thing, I think right. the interpretation you see is that two, he sees yeah. that the woman he's... Two things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This boils down to something we have talked a lot about on this channel, and that is don't misinterpret love. You have to know what it actually is because if you confuse it, then things can go in the wrong direction when you think everything's okay. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where this ended up going. Yeah. Second thing, honestly... When I was looking, like, in the middle of this film, I'm looking at this, and I was like, this has real potential. Because... Mm -hmm. There were a lot of nice homilies in there. <laughs> there were, I agree. Especially the one given to the pizza delivery man. Oh my that god, so funny. That was great. <laughs> Shows the priest doing his incredible homily the whole time, then it turns the camera around, and the priest is like, how much do I owe you? And it's a pizza guy in the middle of like, the church. Just like, uh, oh, classic Father Ollie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but... In their portrayal of this priest, they showed him, they showed his humanness in a lot of different aspects. Oh, yeah. And in some different parts of it, it was just like, you know, that's good to see because, you know, a lot of times we can think, oh, this priest is too, like, holy and I can't even talk to him. Well, no, priests are human and they have struggles and that's, you know, that's, that's an important thing. And seeing this and seeing him kind of start to talk about, like, I don't see God seemed a lot around the lines of, like, I don't feel anything, you know, I, I'm having this almost like a spiritual darkness-esque yeah. type thing. And that was something like to be able to see a priest, portray him as human and have him go through that, that potential of a story plot, that, that was just incredible. I'm looking at this, I was like, oh, yeah. please, Which side is it going to come out on? What's going to right. decide? Right. I'm just like, turmoil please, like this, this looks like it can be... Amazing! Like yeah. the, the story they could tell from this could be fantastic. Uh -huh. And then they dropped the ball. Or the and it kept rolling. And it shattered. And then it shattered. Yeah. And then it shattered. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's interesting because like this film is is in some ways rather different than your typical theatrical film because it's very minimalistic in a lot of ways. Joe and I were both remarking on this, or I think it was Renee pointed this out that the sound design is so minimal. For so most quiet. of the movie, Love. so quiet. It's just the priest either talking in the sanctuary or talking in like their back section. But mm -hmm. there's like no one else around. There's no other sound. No. Yeah. The voices are the only sound. Yeah. Yeah. And me eating my popcorn, I was wishing yeah. for like some <laughs> kind of background music. I was... uh, there was a little background music every now and then, but there was. It was always like they were always putting it on, like almost constantly in a row, like yeah. trying to make like calm subtle drop the mic yeah. moments uh -huh. but like never building up to it mm -hmm. it was like this even yeah. from a technical <laughs> standpoint i think there were a lot of problems with this movie also as far as the story plot goes i was telling you renee like I, mm -hmm. I, right after the movie ended uh we had one of the same uh english professors for our first year in yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, at franciscan mm -hmm. and something she would always say is like when you're writing you like are taking the person by the arm and dragging them to you know whatever the the plot is uh, and you know you have to make it. You can't just have them dragging around like um, there's this thing and that other thing and like this is you're not, not enough detail or what do you. That's kind of what this felt like. 
so many times in the story, I thought maybe it was just me trying to be optimistic because I was really trying to be really optimistic about this film and where it could have gone. And maybe it was me just hoping that it was going to turn into something, you know, that would be actually good for Catholics. Uh-huh. Uh, and, but in reality, it was actually trying to hint to the other way. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe I was just being too optimistic. But like, I think you remarked to me after we saw the film that you didn't think it was made by a Catholic because there was a lack of, um, uh, for one, crucifixes. Um, I think there was, there was not one corpus crucifix <laughs> shown that either, okay, there was one. But it was blurred in the background at an angle, so you couldn't see it directly. Yeah. But there were more. Okay, I said this last night. There were more crucifixes in like the Resident Evil movies and series <laughs> than this movie. Yeah. But well, I don't. I haven't seen Resident Evil. Are they using crucifixes There's for the same purpose? There's rosaries everywhere. Purpose? I mean, are they supposed it's to like an apocalyptic. Yeah. Okay. It's an apocalyptic. Apocalyptic. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it has way more crucifixes in it than this. And it seemed like they weren't allowed to show it. It was so, like, deliberate and, like, out of focus. And I saw no yeah. direct... There was no, like, scene of him, like, praying where there was a cross uh-huh. in the shot. Like, nothing. Yeah. I, I took note on several of the details in the church. And a lot of people might think that's nitpicky. Uh, and, I mean, I can totally understand that. I was actually not even going to mention it. But even from the very beginning, like, the very first shot, when Father sits down in the confessional, he's not wearing a stole. I noticed that. Did you notice that? I did. Yeah. Um, like all of them. I didn't see one. There were, yeah, there are these little details that show you if this per how much this person, this, these creators kind of like have an idea about Catholicism. You know, it, it, the details, especially, they talked about details. In they the, did. Yeah. <laughs> so. The details are important. And I think here it should have given a, Maybe it should give a little bit of a warning flag, like, like not that it can't be a good story. Like a like, credibility like, warning flag. Yeah, if you don't yeah, just like be on guard because, yeah. like, okay, so you know there was no stole, there was no tabernacle. I don't know if you get that was the first thing yeah. I noticed when it, it was just like there was this crucifix there and this Latin mass type altar, but everybody was receiving communion on the hand. It was really an odd setup, like kind of mix of the two. Uh, but again, there was no tabernacle. Uh, I also really hated how Father Ali called the commun- called the communion communion wafers. And I saw you oh, yeah. like a, ah, <laughs> a, like, like a joke. Like because it opens up his homily to the pizza delivery guy by saying, you know, why are, you know, we, why are here? we here? I'm only here for the free communion wafers. Oh, it's like, like a joke. And it's I'm like, even free- that's, that's, no. not, that's not, not a joke. <laughs> Joe is not laughing. No. <laughs> No. Eucharist is literally the most important part of Catholicism. If you nail that, you can nail so many things. It's like he yeah. knows that, though. Yeah. He's a priest. He's a Franciscan priest. He's dedicated exactly. his entire life also, to it. So it's like, I'm here for the so free wafers, obviously. It's so funny, because we were obviously having a conversation like, a like last week that like yeah. going to church for like free food. Do you remember this? Well, was I like, know, you he, wouldn't describe communion as free know. food. Right. No, yeah. You would yeah. describe this it as priceless food. Like, priceless. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I like priceless. that. Him making this joke, I it's like just like that. all of this priest jokes throughout the movie I didn't take very seriously because it's this guy. It's okay. this guy. Also, He's the fact so, we but, have some pretty cool Franciscans at Franciscan yeah. University, so seeing this guy like not what represent cool that? Franciscans was kind of like. Yeah, but really? him saying that didn't surprise me that much because of his character the whole entire time. I was like, yeah, he would say something like that. But I was not uh, and, but I did like what the end, at the end of what he was saying at that speech, which again is one of those things where it felt like they could have totally made something good, where he's talking about compassion. Yeah, and he's saying yeah, that it's great. right. Yeah. He's talking about compassion and me to suffer with, and you know, like I'm like you're getting to what love actually means, and like this can work, this can work. Like come on, like you're so uh-huh. close. Like go do it, you can do it. And then and then it didn't. <laughs> I feel like there are a lot of teachable moments exactly. that could have been like in the in one of the the confession scenes. Um, oh. Father Danny and Jane switch spots. She's like, you know, you always confess to like priests and stuff. Why don't you confess to like a normal person? She's like, he's like, oh, this is a mistake. I shouldn't do this. And he's like, she says, oh no, it's it's fine. Like just get unburden yourself. And that would have been a perfect teachable moment to say, well, in confession, we believe that we are confessing to Jesus because the priest is Christ 
in persona Christi, that is Christ. So you are confessing your sins to Jesus directly. That would have been perfect. That was I what I was thinking the whole time. Yeah. Just it looks like, like they just gave this guy a free collar. Like, didn't he go to school somewhere? Well, no, I think the thing is, like, when, especially when he, he recognizes that there are feelings developing as, as you know, it keeps going. Yeah. And if he's wanting to avoid falling in love, he should have set boundaries like way earlier. Like oh, he yeah. keeps allowing it to escalate. Yeah. I he thought does. things were going really well when they were like sat down and were like, we need to have like set boundaries. Like yeah, really. not afraid to like, you know, we'll be friends. And the first thing I said was like, no, nothing sexual in nature and this and that. And we'll be friends. And I thought things were going really well. I'm like, wow, okay. So they're, you know, pursuing this as a friendship, which is which is healthy. Like mm-hmm. we're all human. We need friends. And we have good relationships, but I'm also thinking, like, what about his church community? It's just one, two, three, four characters. Like, where's the rest of the Three's community? Very busy people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, they're always talking about their schedules and stuff, but yeah. there's like no people. Yeah. <sighs> I'm so sad. I had such hopes. We all did, Joseph. We all did. So, Amy, you said you had a, an optimistic way of interpreting the ending. Yeah. What was that? So, in starting with the. Um, the elder priest running his homily by Father Danny and explaining that. And then Father Danny, after hearing the homily, runs off down to Jane's house. And, um, you know, he's he didn't even bother changing. He just ran straight down there. So, you know, it's important. I'm like, oh, my gosh, he's finally seen God. Like, he talked about how he's never seen God um, the whole, like, have you lost faith? And I'm like, it's just like quiet in the mm-hmm. scene prior. It's like, have you lost faith? And I'm like, oh, oh, I know exactly what he's going to say. I never had it to begin with. And I was like, oh my gosh. So he's running to her house. Uh-huh. I'm like, he's seen God. He's excited. He's, you know, ready. He's going to go and tell her that he's finally seen God. And he wants to share that with her. And then it just like ends. I'm like, okay, so I don't actually know what happened. That's like an artistic interpretation. They're like, how do you think it happened? Leaving it kind of open-ended. But like, I was really hoping that that's, that that's what it was. Uh-huh. Like he finally saw God. He wanted to share that with her and be like, you know, my, my mm-hmm. life has changed. And I didn't really see like the mm-hmm. taking the collar off thing as like something so like mm-hmm. terrible. I think it was, this is how we've always met mm-hmm. and don't want to want to be on want to be approachable in the way that he always has been with her but like yeah there's still, like some jokes they like, make back oh. and forth about like yeah, yeah. I was like there, was, yeah. Uh, right when I was leaving the movie I'm like I could see where they could be like no it actually meant this you know oh. but, it, I but feel like I, but I was just threw me off a little see, bit see I feel like that's just it. by by claiming it's like an artistic way of getting away with it I feel mm. I feel like that's just like a way to try and get away with it as in just like well, l- yeah. by leaving that Think by leaving that, that up to interpretation, how can you not expect people to take it that way? Yeah. And why uh, would you uh, want people, why would you leave room for people to take room. it well, that I, way? I, I, I do know why. Why? Um, after, after this film, when I, was, when I was researching for this review last night, I looked up at the director um, and, you know, his intentions behind making this film. Uh, Paul Schulberg, he, if you saw, the first thing in the credits was, this was dedicated to his father. Mm -hmm. His father left the priesthood for his mother. This is a true story based on his dad. Oh. Oh. That's completely different than I thought. Yeah. But still, it's like, I've heard, I've heard stories like this. I honestly, I honestly have. There was one in the news one time. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, a big deal because, like, a priest leaves the priesthood. Like, what now? Like, can you do that? Is that possible? Like, are they excommunicated all this? And it's just, like, it's happened. Like, we we talked about it in my religion class when I was in high school. And just recognizing that, you know, this actually happens. You know, you don't want to mm-hmm. make it seem like a bigger deal than, you know, it actually is. Don't pretend that it doesn't happen. But, like, mm-hmm. God uses every situation in his own way because he sees the bigger picture and what seems like, you know, you've lost a priest and he's lost his faith and all this. Like there's so many things that have come of it, like a new person, like this movie telling Mm -hmm. the story though, just without knowing that we're all like, what's going on here? And you know, we're all confused. But at the same time, I think 
it could have been more clear in how it ended and saying this is based on a true story. This is what happened. Like if they had said that in the movie, uh -huh. like think we all would have felt a little bit better about it. Like if they put like the photos like at the end of the case for Christ, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, right. here's the real the story yeah. behind it. Yeah. Like that's just that's a that's a game changer for sure. Like, but the same at least for me, and that now I understand it better. Uh -huh. But I can't say that things went exactly the way that we would have liked it to. Or, but I mean, life isn't cut and. You know this is great and this is great and mm -hmm. there are some storms that you get over it but like it's just so why did they say that homily before he ran and gave it up it was a good homily i know like interpret it correctly it, it just made him look homily. stupid like you interpreted it wrong right Which you probably don't want to do if you're dating after your father i don't know it seemed like he was on good terms with the old priest right before he ran away from him yeah oh, i mean i guess obviously not i mean he felt like uh, Catholicism is what made his dad such a great person, so he wanted to go back. And so he wasn't religious. He wanted to portray Catholicism in a good way. So he, he didn't get a lot of stuff completely accurate, as you <laughs> said. But he was trying. Yeah. Um, but yeah. you can see that it wasn't quite... But I feel like leaving, not being specific and this is what this is and this is what this is and leaving it open to interpretation whatever mm -hmm. your intentions are your intentions are always going to come across unless you clearly state them like how many times mm -hmm. do we misinterpret a situation in our own life like oh renee didn't sit with me at lunch today she must mm -hmm. be avoiding me where oh she's actually really busy she has a test she overslept this morning whatever mm -hmm. like she you know a situation unless you say this is what happened you aren't able to know so mm -hmm. i think we're all like um this could have been better because we're all we all feel that mm -hmm. anybody could interpret this anyway and this could lead people astray kind of thing like well i mean i guess considering what he was going for in the story it seems to be portraying this like if this is an actual true story then mm -hmm. Kind of portraying this in memory of seems to be portraying what happened as a good thing. Yeah, I mean, because uh, in, in order to leave the priesthood uh, for something, is you have to get special permission from the pope, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which he did end up getting. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and wow. He remained involved involved yeah. with like his local parish right. and Catholicism throughout his life. Right. The thing oh, the wow. which the thing is, see, this is it, it, this is rough, but mm -hmm. like. Putting out, they're making a film that's saying like, oh, it's okay mm -hmm. to go into the priesthood in the first place, like, and not, you know, all the things that should have happened. Not have faith. That, that the, all the things that should have happened from the very beginning to stop him from getting into the priesthood that he should have gone through, that seminary should have gotten him toward. Now, if there was a... If it was kind of to show, if this film was to show how maybe his training didn't go right mm. and, you know, different problems that like actual real life problems in seminaries, because there have been, that would have been one thing. But to kind of portray this in a good light, mm. the, the things that happen, that it's, that's not a good thing. And I understand that's a true story, but you can't justify telling a true story while also promoting the bad things in yeah. the true story. Yeah, it is sad that he got all the way through, like you said, all the seminary and stuff, and mm -hmm. was a priest without without faith or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in that situation, if you are Father Daniel, what do you do? I feel like even when... Do you get someone to just help you, or like do you leave? Yeah. If you know, like, this is... And I feel um, like more could have been done when he was bringing up I have a relationship with someone else mm -hmm. and this relationship has not been specifically defined as romantic or as mm -hmm. a friendship or anything and he's even with him stumbling about talking about him like I don't even think you have it figured out like we you need to talk with someone like they mm -hmm. didn't really the other priest didn't really address it they just kind of let it mm -hmm. happen whereas even when at the dinner scene and they're she comes back in and he's like nothing happened and she's like that's that's utter crap and I'm thinking okay well then what do you need to do about it? Like, do you need to go, to, do you need to have confession? Do you need um, to sit down and talk about it? Is there someone else in like a neighboring parish mm -hmm. that you would feel more comfortable talking to than mm -hmm. us? Or like, you want to talk to the bishop? And like, it didn't feel like, like they lived in community, but they weren't a community. They didn't handle mm -hmm. conflict well. 
-hmm. and having myself yeah. lived in a community of like seven people, we had conflict. We, you know, it's, it's not a community without conflict and not having, being able to resolve that as well. Like, I feel like it just wasn't handled at all. Yeah, the main thing I think is, bottom line is, this wasn't portrayed as a tragedy that happened. This wasn't portrayed as a bad thing. It was portrayed kind of as a good thing. And that, yeah. was, that, was, yeah. that was the problem. Which I think, I mean, I, since he is, you know, the son of this marriage, I don't think he portrayed it any other way um, as a positive thing. I think the main thing may come down to how he chose to portray the story developing. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, you know... Often, oftentimes in, you know, movies, dialogue and specific scenes don't go down quite the way they happen in real life yeah. because you have to create sort of a narrative structure. But, um, you know, it, if it were to happen exactly as it had in real life in the movie, it would not have, there would have been several spots that would not have been, you know, the ideal response to do in that situation. Um, and I guess um, what we can hope for is that it was... I guess a better version of how they approached it in real life, perhaps. There were a lot of good points in the movie. I just wish they would have capitalized on it. Then I wonder, it's like if he really wasn't supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. Then is it a good ending? But a sad story. I, I don't know. And the fact he got uh -huh. approval from the Pope, uh -huh. it makes yeah. it like, oh, good, thank goodness you're not excommunicated or anything. Uh -huh. Like, yeah. that's really like, good news. Uh -huh. He actually went through the proper process procedure to get mm -hmm. that done. And he was still mm -hmm. Catholic and everything? Yeah. Okay, wow. Um, so that's really just a story of struggle, it looks like. But mm -hmm. the fact he's still with his faith on the other side of it is amazing. But it was dark. It was confusing to put all yeah. that into the last thirty seconds of the film. Yeah, where it's like I still have my faith and I have a girlfriend. It's like, whoa, what wait, hold on, I don't know this. Yeah, may maybe a better way if if we're talking about like the message of the story, because there is beauty in the vocation of uh, the call to the priesthood yeah. and the call yes. to the married life. Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, yes, and. I, I guess it was that uh, this, this film touched a ton on the beauty of the call to the priesthood, mm -hmm. but it didn't really focus on the call to the married life because mm -hmm. we just saw the very, very beginning of their relationship. Maybe so perhaps don't. there was an imbalance there so that it, it looks like for us, like he's, he's doing all these great things as a priest and he's leaving that. Mm -hmm. So we don't quite get to see what comes back. Actually, afterwards. I would say that my bigger problem would be that they didn't do enough justice specifically to the priesthood other than, again, that montage where he's like helping a lot of people. I thought that mm -hmm. was very, very beautiful. But especially going to the point where he's just like, a lot of things were ended up being based on feelings and they portrayed the priesthood as, you know, very lonely, which I mean, it, priesthood definitely has its like sufferings, but like joining the priesthood, mm -hmm. you know, you should have more of an idea. After all those years of seminary mm -hmm. should have Again, maybe there's a problem with a specific seminary, but again, portraying this in a good light is the thing that's not a good idea. So I would say that in certain key aspects that ended up shaping what happened, not enough justice was actually done to the priesthood on top of, you know, not, I, I mean, this film wasn't technically about like showing the beauty of marriage because... I mean, we didn't technically see specifically like that mm -hmm. happen, but yeah. I would say like not enough justice was actually done to the priesthood to show, you know, why the cultural misconceptions of like, oh, you're lonely and how could you want that and this and that and you're going to be so, you know, all that loneliness and like mm -hmm. darkness was kind of like portrayed right there in the priesthood instead of like, again, not that there are sufferings, there are crosses, but there are crosses in marriage too, you know, there are crosses mm -hmm. in both yeah. and why not show the goodness, the wholeness, the inspiration behind the vocation of the priesthood? Yeah, it's like they did that at the beginning. Remember when he was like coming back from uh, burying that person? Yeah, with the woman. Yeah, like, yeah. There they did a little bit of scenes it. where we were all yeah. like, "Wow!" Yeah. yeah, But then you're right. Then it goes to this big darkness. Maybe following the character feeling out of place. Yeah, like, perhaps. oh, I'm doing all of these things, but I'm actually not happy. Well, that's yeah. not the priesthood in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. Okay. it's like it, there's a certain living your faith that in this particular vocation, you know, as there is in every vocation, but just a certain living your faith that needs to be there, you know, and portraying it in a light of, oh, well, you know, if it, try and uh, 
try and fail, like, you know, try run, whatever, for Priest, it's kind of like, yeah. Mm-hmm. This is so weird, because I think this is the first panel discussion about a movie that we've all already seen, where mm-hmm. at the end of the panel discussion, I feel differently about the movie than I did at the beginning of the panel discussion. Mm-hmm. Especially knowing that detail about yeah what the movie actually was, like, for mm-hmm. his father and stuff. Like, yeah. um... I really was just like, oh, I don't really like that movie, but now I understand it way more. Yeah. And um, it's it just looks like a, a real life story to me. My my first initial reaction is like, this shouldn't be this way, but then it's it's the the real part is saying, hey, but real life isn't clear cut by the book how you think it should be. It's always going to mm-hmm. unfold differently than how you expect. Mm-hmm. And so this being how it happened, or a portrayal interpretation of what happened. Um, in the way that they did it, I'm applauding, you know, you did the what you could with what you had. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just how it was. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. Well, again, I think like, like Renee was saying, like knowing the trueness of the actual story as far as like what actually happened was is definitely extremely helpful to talking about this subject uh i think this is an aspect though where a problem with the plot itself where it's talking about love and it's kind of portraying love and truth as kind of these things that are not conjoined as one conjoined as together and beautiful and working together in harmony as it's like oh i can't break this promise oh but love and you know it they're both supposed to work together and you know with a film like this like even yes maybe your parents the people you love like that's something that you know you're just like well how am i supposed to you know be uh, not portray this in a good light uh the because you don't want to portray that in a bad light because of love mm-hmm. for your family and again that's understandable at the same time that love and the truth of the matter have to work together mm-hmm. so the plot the deep root of the plot part didn't take place because the deep root for the reason didn't take place. And that's why I say it's just like, hey, I understand it's a true story, but truth and love have to work together. Well, I can't really relate because Eastern Catholics don't have this problem. I <laughs> 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 go, my priest and his wife and three kids are very happy. <laughs> Don't debate me on this in the comments. Don't look it up. It's tradition on the Eastern Catholic side. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, it's not a problem over there. And I was thinking about that a lot during the end of the film. Uh-huh. <laughs> about about um, that whole issue that uh-huh. happens, that has happened with probably a lot of priests out there, you know, where they've been tempted or they have left or whatever. And I mean, if it's, I don't know, I have this feeling that if it's one less priests who shouldn't be in the vocation or because they might, who knows what would build up and what could happen if the situation isn't dealt with properly. Like mm-hmm. obviously it wasn't dealt with properly earlier. So this is what mm-hmm. happened, you know, like he got to the priesthood and was still like not doing well. <laughs> I might have PTSD from some of the problems the Catholic church has had with some priests who obviously, yeah. you know, were not in the right place for them mm-hmm. or, yeah. couldn't overcome some things or weren't given the right attention or whatnot. Yeah. And I'm like, I as a Catholic, wanting to be like, I want to make sure this mm-hmm. does not happen. But I mean, we're human beings. It's going to keep mm-hmm. yeah. happening. I mean, yeah, it, like that, that's the thing. It does happen where uh, priests, nuns, you know, they end up maybe going into a seminary or a convent, maybe for the wrong reasons or maybe they're pressured and then maybe I've heard stories of like trying trying to get out but like they're just like oh no don't you not 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 letting them leave and then having to get special permission and stuff like that like again that's that's it's that's understandable it's just I guess if you want more vocations you take more risks which is (laughs) sad I think in looking Um, at what you were saying before I think there is a healthy fear in do you want people who you entrust the authority to lead people to know what they're doing mm-hmm. and There's to a have people, a faith a lot of center. Souls under each priest, yeah. Absolutely. And that's like a huge responsibility for someone to be given the task that has been apostolically passed down mm-hmm. um, to lead people to God and to faith. 
you don't want someone who is trying to figure it out along the way. Like you have to have a strong foundation. And I feel like he really didn't. Yeah, he he did. said he went into it because that's what his father wanted. And he liked the idea as well as his father mm -hmm. did. And he wanted to see God. Maybe he yeah. a priest that could see God. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking they're, they're in the scrutinies of the um, seminary. You know, you're going to be faced with so many different situations that both invoke a spirit and and faith and really require faith. This whole vocation is based on faith. Mm -hmm. And to be able to have a good foundation um, and personal belief as part of it. Like if he never had faith in the first place, yeah. we're all really wondering, how did you get so far then? Mm -hmm. um, but to be able to lead your vocation in the one that God truly calls you to, uh, whatever route and twists and turns and things you run into along the way, um, you know, God will lead you to the right path, um, and you'll find your true vocation in that. But honestly speaking, you want to be able to have the foundation so you can lead people in the right way and not unintentionally lead them astray because there are grave ramifications for that. I guess when you have a big, you take a big risk in faith, you know, to pursue a, a high calling like the priesthood, um, in my head, I feel like if it's kind of, have you read Dante's Inferno before? I'm going and to how the it. bishops and popes get pretty low down there mm -hmm. because they could be pretty high up there mm -hmm. too, you mm -hmm. know, with the, the grace and potential and the opportunity they've been given and the calling, etc. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess it's why the, <laughs> a, a priest, um, at risk, I guess just at risk in general is such a scary, tragic thing because they can be, they have this um, opportunity to interact with so many hmm. people on a day to day basis and really, um, yeah, it just affect a lot of souls and bring a lot of souls to heaven. Yeah. You or want a good not. You or want the a, opposite. And it's like a big. <laughs> you want a good shepherd. Yeah. yeah. You, you want do. a good shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Um, that movie. Brought up a lot of things, obviously. So we've been talking good a while, conversation. But, yeah, a lot yeah, of good conversation. Yeah, there's still some stuff we didn't even touch on. So. Yeah, yeah, there's so much more we could say about those topics we opened up just now as well. And uh, but this movie got us talking and yeah. thinking. Um, but it was, I don't know. It was, in my opinion, it told a story. Maybe not mm -hmm. super well because I was confused. Yeah. But um, it was a real story, and I don't know how much I can change or complain about that because it was real. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.